Hi everyone, in case you're wondering why it looks like I just woke up, it's because I just woke up. Anyway, <laughs> I have a review, well obviously you know that, you already clicked the link, but my review today is of the new Menzingers album. And this is actually the closest I've actually reviewed something to when it was released, because this record is only a week old at this point. And it's only a week old, but I've already listened to it at least 15 times all the way through. And there's a reason for that. It is goddamn great. Yeah, Time Magazine wouldn't print that description of the review, but... Or Rolling Stone, or whoever does senior reviews, I don't know, I don't read magazines. Anyway, my point is, the record is very good. Um, it's better than the first two. It's better than anything that's come out this year. And it's one of the best albums I've ever heard. Um, start with the packaging here. This is the first time I've ever reviewed vinyl, actually. I was going to do... My first one was going to be Outcome of the Wolves because I was doing... I planned on doing all the rancid ones, but this album was so good I just had to come out and, you know, say how good it was. First record on Epitaph. You see the logo in the corner there? Uh, I kept this in plastic. I recommend doing that. It helps preserve your record a little bit. I mean, it's something really special. Black vinyl. You know, I think if you ordered from Epitaph, I'm not sure if they still have any left. I think it might have been limited. You'd color vinyl. Um, this thing has always been cool to me. The canary and the coal mine. I like that. And of course, there's the lyrics in the back. <laughs> anyway, the album is really good. I ordered it exclusively from Interpunk. I mean, their inter their exclusive deal, which had a poster which is over there and um this also comes with a cd version of the record and i came with a sticker too so nice little gift nice little bonus i think if you order off the website that the epitaph website oh excuse me they have bundles with colored vinyl and t-shirts and hoodies and you can get all sorts of deals if they're still around i'm not sure if they are I'm not sure how fast they sold but um yeah let's talk about some songs shall we the opening, Good Things, just such a song that starts slow and kicks, and I love stuff that does that, and it's really a good song. Burn After Writing, one of the best on the record, so good, just so good. The Obituaries, which is a song they released before the record came out, and it got me so pumped by this record, that's why I bought it on pre-order a couple months before it came out. Okay, um, really good chorus, you know, sing-along choruses they become kind of, you know, known for. Gates, great song, great lyrics. It kind of entails and fancies the idea that this is a partially conceptual album because, you know, you're here sounds better later. Ava House. My least favorite song on the album, but I'd still give it like four out of five stars. It's the only one that I give four out of five. All the other are five stars. You know, it's that good of a record. But, um, I don't know. It's probably only my least favorite because the song after is my most favorite, which is The Sun Hotel. And just the amazing lyrics and the great vocal harmony and just their voices, which could not be matched. Side B, well, if you're on a CD or downloading it, I guess there is no side B. But it's Sculptors and Vandals, interesting track, very fun. Mexican Guitar is track 8, very cool song. Um, talks about, you know, messing and guitars and singing songs and, you know, very simple things. There's a lot of simple themes in this album that people can relate to, which I think... There's that, but at the same time, there's a lot of themes that are kind of deep that we don't even realize. You know, I think the Menzing has always done a pretty good job doing that. Even more so in this one with the, with the relatability of it, though. Okay, the next song is um, Nice Things. Not On the Impossible Pass, which is a very kind of a bridge track. Title track, obviously. Very somber, slow song. But it's very cool. And, you know, it's a very good song. And I've always enjoyed stuff like that. You know, just kind of bridges into the next song, which is a song called Nice Things. And it's, I saw them play that live before the record came out, and it just blew me away, the vocal power that they that Greg and Tom have. And, you know, and the drums on it are really cool, too. And I just really enjoyed that track. And, again, like I said, within these two songs, there's references to things like the beginning of the record, like American Muscle Cars and smoking cigarettes and being with a waitress and all this, and you know, it's kind of just tells a story a little bit. Not a, not directly, not a complete, you know, con concept, but it, it is loosely, loosely there. You know, there's several themes throughout it. It's like reading a book almost, you know. Next song is a very great song, probably my second favorite song on the album, which is Casey, which is obviously about a girl. And it's a very good, fun song. I, I guess would be the word for it. 
you know, like, just very simple things, like getting drunk and doing dishes, and, you know, it's probably about working a shit job and hating it, and at least there's one thing that's there, that's your friend Casey. Okay, uh, track 12, I Can't and Seem to Tell. This is the first time I've ever really heard them use Chris's bass. I mean, obviously they're playing it, but, I mean, like, you can really hear the bass in the song, it's like a really cool, simple little bass riff to it, and it really kind of sound. I said this a lot already, but um, it sounds like almost like an early 90s alternative song or something, but I like it, it's really cool. Um, yes, so, and the final track is Freedom Bridge, an excellent way to end the record, just a totally awesome song, and it just leads you with this feeling of, wow, I just listened to a great record, and I just got a great finish. There's a lot of, I hate when bands have such good records, and their last song is less than, you know, less than stellar. I hate when that happens. But um, 13 tracks, and I give, if we we're going to do by the modern standard, which is the iTunes 5-star or, or system, I'd give every track on here but one 5 stars. So this album would get like a 97 on a test, you know? <laughs> it is that good. It is beyond great. Epitaph was a good move for this band. A lot of people bitch and moan and complain when bands go to Epitaph because they think that Epitaph is now just not what it used to be. I think they're doing an insanely good job, if I could just get on my little soapbox for a second, of rebuilding their reputation of good bands with having bands like Alkaline Trio and Social Distortion, Weezer, uh, off with their heads. It's It's been pretty good for them in the last few weeks, I mean, the last few years of trying to establish themselves as a great indie, you know, because they were getting their asses kicked by Cyborg and Dummy and Fat as far as good music, because they'd really gone to scream on a metalcore direction, and a lot of their core fans were like, what are you doing? <laughs> but, um, the Menzingers, you know, again, to get on the soapbox, and I'm just talking about the record, just them as a band, they're a great band, they work very hard, I saw them play in front of eight people, and it was like they were playing in front of a thousand. And there was during their break of a tour where they were playing in front of a thousand people because they were playing with a day to remember who I can only imagine how much that must have sucked and rather against, you know. And they go from playing venues like that and, you know, 40 bucks, 50 bucks a night, a ticket, to go from playing for like 12 bucks, you know. I think it was like $10 to go see them play in headline and with like 10 people. But it was a very great, fun show, and they are great songwriters, and I've met every one of them, and they're all very nice guys, and they deserve everything they have, and I really do believe that this band will be a lot like against me in the way that they were going to blow up. Hopefully not become one-hit wonders, I guess, would be the term for against me, because of Thrash and Real and how many millions of YouTube views it would have or whatever, but I mean, and they're probably going to cause a lot of controversy like against me did with, you know, their decisions as far as a band, but you know what, I'm sure they don't care. But, you know, I cannot say enough th good things about that band, and I can't wait to see where they go in the future. And this record is goddamn amazing. 10 out of 10. On the Impossible Past. The Menzingers. Okay, thank you for watching my video. Um, thank you for letting me waste your time. Peace. Um, unity. And, you know, keep on watching. Keep on subscribing. Comment, please. It's always appreciated. And thank you. Have a good day. I remember you well at the Sun Hotel where we were waiting impatiently for a day, sun, night, sleep.